Welcome Concrete Maniacs. My name is Tyler, Tyler Lay, and this is the third video in the T-Beam series. This time, we're gonna finally get to design a T-Beam. Ah, <laughs> I love it. Now we get to design a simply supported T-Beam. It's gonna span 30 feet. It's gonna support a factored load of four kit per foot, and it's got internal exposure. What does that mean? 60 KSI, F prime C is 4 KSI, the height is 32 inches, and we're gonna assume it's an isolated T-beam. It's a T-beam all by itself. So let's estimate D. Remember, we don't really know what D is. We don't know anything. That's one of the beauties about design. It's so hard to kind of cut through and figure it all out, but I'm gonna show you some tricks. So we're gonna assume that we're gonna have two layers of steel. Why? Because I've designed quite a few T-beams, and it's pretty good to assume two layers of steel. If it doesn't work, then go back and do it just for one. And we're going to assume there's two inches of spacing between those layers. So my total height would be 32 inches. How did I know that? That was given to me in the problem. I'm going to make it as high as I can. My cover, that's one and a half inches. I have one stirrup I'm going through. I'm going to assume a number eight bar. It may or may not be right. I'm gonna go through one bar, right? And then I'm gonna assume one inch spacing so I can go to the center of the cover. And that, whole, that all gives me about 28 inches for my D. Now I'm gonna try my B sub W is 12 inches. And this is in my opinion, again, this is another Yelp tip. Yay, Yelp. This is the Yelp for concrete where I've done a lot of this and I'm gonna help you get through the maze. This is about as small as you should go. 12 inches. If you get much smaller than that, it's just too hard to fit all your steel in. Okay? So that's a good number to choose. So I'm gonna, so let's use a B that's equal to four times my BW. Okay? And this is again just a good guess. You could pick based on your structure too if you have some other geometry. But four times your width is a pretty good estimate of usually what your total B is, your total width. So that's 48 inches. So we have 48 inches here. We have 12 inches, 12 inches here. Our total height is 32. And then our slab thickness, if you ever designed slabs before, six inches is as thin as you can go with a slab that's used in a fire type environment where you might expect to have fire above or below the beam. So six inches is the minimum. So let's motor on. we got lots of stuff. we got a good guess at, a, at an actual cross-section. Let's find the amount of steel we need. So I'm going to take my moment. I'm going to solve for my maximum moment. I'm going to assume it's simply supported. Use my WL squared over 8, and I get 5,400 kip inches. I'm going to assume my fee is 0.9. That's a good guess. Okay, I'm going to check it at the end. So I get 6,000 kip inches, and now I start plugging in. I'm gonna use my 0.9D trick. I told you before, I'm gonna assume that. I'm gonna find my area of steel is 3.96 inches squared, and I'm gonna use six bars. So 3.96 divided by six is 0.66 inches squared per bar, and I'm gonna use a number eight bar. Um, because I went into a table and I looked up all the bars, and a number eight bar was just a little bit larger than this, and that means I'm providing 4.74 inches squared of steel. Now we're gonna check, are we in case one or are we in case two? To do that, we check with this A. This A may or may not be true. It's a mythical A, okay? It's assuming we're in case one. So we're gonna calculate this A, 4.74, boom, 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 and we get 1.74 inches. It's less than six inches. Yes, we're in case one, and guess what? If this is my beam and I'm designing it, I'm gonna make it be in case one, okay? Case one is an efficient section. That's where you want it to be. Your fee now, we're gonna check and make sure our fee check was correct. So this 1.74 is correct, yes! Our beta one, 0.85, so I get 2.05. I plug into our favorite equation to find the strain in our steel, and I get 0.038, which is greater than 005. This means again, fee is 0.9, yes! Moving on. So we get to check our capacity now, okay? We knew we're shooting for 6,000 kip inches. We get to plug into our real equation now. None of this is assuming 0.9D. This is the real check. 4.74, 60 KSI. My D is 28 inches. 1.74 divided by 2, I get 77.16. 
This is awesome, which is greater than 6,000. I'm looking pretty good. I solved for my area of steel. I shouldn't even be anywhere near it. It would be a shock if your area of steel minimum controlled for a T-beam. Does not control. And now I have to do my bar spacing check. So I have two covers on both sides. I have two stirrups on both sides. I have two stirrup bend diameters. That's four times the diameter of the stirrup. If you don't know what that is, watch my other video. And now I count, plug into this two times N minus one where N is the number of bars. I'm choosing three bars across here and I get 10 inches, which is just a little bit less than 12. Yes, 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 yes. It works, it works, it works. Thank you so much for watching. Please like my videos, subscribe to my channel, tell your friends, leave me a comment, tell me things you like, you don't like. I really appreciate you. Go Concrete.